If you've been a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's for the past few years, then you are definitely aware that we have been absolutely swimming in content as of late. In just the last year alone, we have gotten a free story-based expansion of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, a sequel to one of the best FNAF games ever made with Help Wanted 2, and probably the most important release in the FNAF franchise. After almost 10 years of development, we've finally gotten the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which has become the highest grossing horror movie of 2023, making an amazing $2, at least. However, those massive achievements aren't what I want to talk about today. I want to focus on a much more fascinating and revolutionary project that has come out of the franchise, just to be mostly forgotten by the general public. And if you're a hardcore FNAF fan, then you definitely know what I'm referring to. I'm talking about the Fazbear Fanverse, one of the coolest projects to ever come out of the FNAF franchise. To those unaware, the main concept of the Fastback Fanverse is that Scott Cawthon, the creator and IP owner of FNAF, would officially publish and fund certain FNAF fan games. This is an unheard of practice that really has not been done by any developer at all. The only thing I could think of is when Capcom published Street Fighter X Mega Man. But other than that, this is completely taboo and untouched territory, which is why this amazing and potentially revolutionary project is so interesting to me. So with the fanverse just shy of turning four years old, I figured I would recap all the small details we've gathered over the years, share the teasers that have come and released, go over the developers and all the incredibly polite statements they've made over the years, and review the games that have released, see how they hold up and see if they truly meet the standard of being part of the Fazbear fanverse. So let's start where this all began on April 22nd, 2022. Hey guys, due to the controversy of the fanverse, I've decided to shift the focus of this video just a bit to a story time video. So without further ado, here's the story of how I met the one, the only, Mark Nicholas, aka Windigoot, who has made such insightful and prolific videos such as Cursed Gun Images But I Have to Say Something Nice, I Proved the JFK Conspiracy with a Whiteboard, and my personal favorite, Sunday Studies Number 4, Samuel and Saul. Now with the creator as revered as that, I am proud to share this truly heartwarming story of how I met Nicholas. So basically, I saw Windigood at the store recently, and I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche about it and bother him or ask for a photo or anything. He said, oh, like you're doing right now? And I was taken aback. And all I could say was, huh? But he kept cutting me off and going, huh, huh? Huh? and closing his hand to shut in front of my face. I walked away and continued my shopping, and I heard him chuckle as I walked off. When I came to pay for my stuff up in front, I saw him trying to walk out the door with like 15 Milky Ways in his hand without paying. A girl at the counter was very nice and professional and was like, sir, you need to pay for those first. At first, he kept pretending to be tired and he couldn't hear, but eventually he turned back around and brought them to the counter. When she took one of the bars and started scanning it multiple times, he stopped her and told her to scan them individually to prevent any electronic interference, and then turned around and winked at me. I don't even know if that's a word, but whatever. After she scanned them all and put them in a bag, she started to say the price, and he kept interrupting her by yawning really loudly. After that, he just walked away into the woods like, dude, come on, man. Now, wasn't that just a heartwarming story? This is why I go to Walmart, so I can have an amazing experience just like this. However, some people cannot have amazing experiences at Walmart, and frankly, just should not be allowed in Walmart. Just like this woman from the Montgomery incident. For those unaware of the tragedy that happened in Arizona, Florida, where a woman walked into a Walmart, took out her credit card, and paid for an item. I know, I don't like to get into drama much on this channel, but I feel like this situation needs to be addressed. I cannot believe this woman, this absolute degenerate, would engage in behavior like this. I mean, this is just a disgusting example of humanity. A person supporting a form of government by paying for a commercial good. Completely disgraceful behavior. This is just unacceptable. Supporting an economy? Now that is perfectly fine. I am totally okay with supporting that. Supporting a government? Now, that's where I draw the line. But before I continue with the drama, I just need to lock it on this Fall Guys game really quick. I am, I am so close to getting this crown. 
Well, you know, they can't all be winners, fellas. Just like Mario vs. Donkey Kong. This game about Christine Pat and this dumb, stupid ape is being sold for 50 dollars dues. Why, on Gabe Newell's Green Earth, would you pay 50 schmeckles for a dumb, cheaply made ape game? I mean, I mean, look at these graphics. I can't even see the individual ape hairs on Donkey Kong. Come on, Nintendo. Modders have been able to do this for years. You know what? You know what? I'm I'm sick of this. I'm sick of these modern games. I'm sick of all the microtransactions, half-baked releases with little content just to be sold back as DLC. I'm gonna go back to a classic game, a true gem of its time. I'm gonna play Donkey Kong 3 on NES. You know, this game is overlooked by the critics because of its graphics, but you know what? This one, I can at least see all the APs on it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to show you my entire no commentary playthrough of Donkey Kong 3. Oh, my God. 
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed those tips on how to P-rank Sisyphus Prime on Violence Difficulty. I genuinely appreciate your support. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, going to my OnlyFans, and liking all my tweets. Thank you so much, guys. Next video will be about why Lefty is worth $5.